Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your St. Kitts Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of St. Kitts Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Good afternoon and welcome to another Working for You program. I am your host, Les Roy Williams. We thank you for tuning in to today's program. Today we are going to be talking about the importance of early childhood education and I have with me guests from the Early Childhood Education Unit within the Ministry of Education. I have with me Travia Tyson, good afternoon. Juliana Powell Pleasant. Good afternoon. and Nadine Natter. Good afternoon. You're very welcome to this yeah. program. Thank you. Of course, when I was growing up, I didn't know much about early childhood education. Well, not from a formal point of view. At least I was home, and then when I was five years old, I went to kindergarten. But now today there is a prevalence of preschools and nurseries and so on in the Federation and the importance of early childhood education is now being underscored especially you know from a formal point of view before that of course children stayed at home and the parents looked after them or the the grandparents looked after them and so on until they were ready to go to school at age five now they are going out into preschools and nurseries and so on and this is a whole other dimension of education which we refer to as early childhood education yes. okay so I want to begin by asking what is early childhood education early childhood education is a period within a child's life that spans between zero birth to at least age eight this period is a critical time where we have to focus on the foundation, the basic needs of the child. So this, in our sector, early childhood, we really focus on zero to five, which is the nursery section to the preschool. preschool. And there's some, in the primary school, we have the children who goes up to age eight. They are still in the range of early childhood. Certainly. Okay. Now, you say you focus on certain things, and I'm sure that the, the, the cognitive yes. and social development, yes. development is important. Talk to us about that. Well, we focus on the holistic development, that's the physical, the cognitive, the social, emotional. And what we do, we do early stimulation. We don't vote, teach. We stimulate them through play, mm -hmm. um, using theories from Piaget, Vygotsky, and those early theorists. And we create an environment which is um, f conducive for their development, their learning, their stimulation, visually, overly, so that we can meet all their needs. Mm -hmm. And because um, each child is different, you have to ensure that there's uh, materials and there are activities that would, um, you know, pique their interests. Because we sometimes we have some children who they're not easy to please, so you have to make sure that whatever you do, it meets the needs of all of your children. Okay, but why is early childhood education important? Why is it important? Um, why focus on mm -hmm. early childhood education? What are some of the benefits and rationales mm -hmm. for investing in early childhood education? Hmm. Well, they're in the pre-operational stage of development. 
you know, at that point, that's the most sensitive stage of development because by the time they reach age five, whatever is instilling them, it, you know, it's very hard to take that out. So what we do, we and we, it is important for us to focus on that part of their life because that's the most delicate period of their mm -hmm. life Sensitive. where, you know, you have to teach them about caring, you expose them to <coughs> the idea of um, the attached trust and mistrust, mm -hmm. all of that. It's, you know, it's not mm -hmm. just about the cognitive part, uh, but we have to build a, a sense of attachment where yes. they learn to trust people, learn to socialize. The because social that skills. is, yes, that is very important today in our society. We need to build children who can socialize. And I mm -hmm. believe that once we work on that, it will help to combat some of the criminal activities that we have in our society. Mm -hmm. And also to add to that, not forgetting the physical side right. because mm -hmm. our children need to be physically healthy as well. We need to create that environment for them to be able to go outside, be physically active, to develop their growth and find mottos. Because if you notice, some children will have difficulty holding a pencil. What we do, we help them to manipulate um, age-appropriate materials so yeah. they can they can begin their writing sure. skills. Mm -hmm. So this is very important and this is also a benefit mm -hmm. for the young children. Right. Right. And also, it's beneficial for the parents also, not just for the children, but for the parents where we ourselves as the practitioners in early childhood can form a relationship as well with the parents and teaching them um, what early childhood is about, how to deal with your children and at different age levels, mm -hmm. at one level, portray this type of behavior at age two what is going to happen and you know you keep sensitizing them about what is happening what is the gradual development of the child mm -hmm. now children I mean I have taught but mm -hmm. not at that level, level. Okay. Hmm. and I always think it is so difficult to teach at that level because children are very curious right mm -hmm and their attention span is very limited. Now, I suppose that mm -hmm. part of your task is to improve their attention span. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> we have to. You know, because they keep moving around and they're very, you know, active. They're very active and so on. They mm -hmm. can't stick to anything. Their ability to listen, maybe, mm -hmm. or to participate in a group or you know, to follow directions, right. to work independently. And that's where our curriculum comes in, the mm -hmm. high school curriculum. Mm -hmm. We follow a daily routine <coughs> where all that you just spoke of is addressed during that routine. Because uh, from they come in the morning, they know it's greeting, then they have their free play, they wait for devotion, and this continues every day. So they get used to it and they, they expect they, you know, they become expectant of the next activity. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that we do, we have routine cards, which we would have them change themselves. So they can't read the words, but by the pictures, they're able to read the pictures and they know what comes next. So we would ask them, okay, can you go and show us what would come next? Then there's a classroom management um, techniques that we use. One of them is that we are trying and we are hoping that our teachers would get is um, the conditioning. <coughs> And when I speak of conditioning, I recall visiting the dolphin park with our students some time back. And you see how they train the dolphins to obey, you know, and they cannot verbalize. So I believe if the dolphins can do it, our children can do it. So through conditioning, we get them to, you know, stay within the routine, mm -hmm. focus on the activities that they have, and work along with their friends. Right. And as I said, it's a daily practice, so it becomes normal for them. Mm -hmm. And this is why our curriculum is also child friendly. It gives the children the freedom to go and use the materials, mm -hmm. feel free to interact with the adults mm -hmm. and also their peers. They are not fearful of going to take something or asking for something because that interaction is there. Mm -hmm. and, this all, and we also help to promote their learning within the environment. So our curriculum is child friendly and it's working. And yes. it's not just yes, for the preschool children, <coughs> it also starts from the infant, infant section. section. The, mm -hmm. the babies, they also too have a daily routine. Mm -hmm. And this is where we have our one of our best practices, which we try to get the private 
centers to come on board with early childhood education so that we could show them how to stimulate children through activities and through the daily routine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now, what are some of the factors that have brought about this shift in our society towards more prevalence in formal early childhood education? What has brought about this? Because mm -hmm. there has been a paradigm shift. Yes, that is true. We are seeing more and more centers around mm -hmm. St. Kitts. Yes. Preschools, yes. nurseries, yes. and so on. What has brought about this? Because as I mentioned before, when I mm -hmm. was growing up, when I was very young, I didn't go to school until I was five years old, and that really was the norm yeah. in those days. But Mr. Williams, if you remember back then, you didn't have much parents working, especially the mothers. They stayed home, mm -hmm. and I guess that's where early childhood evolved, because after parents started going out to work, the females were more welcome into the workplace, mm -hmm. then we started evolving. We had a crutch, mm -hmm. and then we mm -hmm. developed Some into the, yes, the daycare, mm -hmm. and there was a... Mother's League, yes, yes. that was League, League. Right. yes, which mm -hmm. first you know evolved, and we later realized the importance of early childhood education. That sending off a child to school just at grade five, it was not cutting it because there were some basic skills that they really needed to develop in their earlier stages. Staying home with their parents, it was not you know some of them may not know or understand, mm -hmm. and some of them just happen to get it right. But with a more formal education, we are able to help parents to you know guide them work along with them so we can build on these important skills before they move on to the um, official beginning of their school schooling yes yeah, so it is that early intervention yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and with that early intervention our partner unicef, UNICEF. Mm -hmm. has recognized the potential of St. Kitts and Nevis, which we are ranked highly in the Caribbean for early childhood education. So with their assistance, they help us to put on training for these private centers who are opening the nurseries so we can train them into caring for young children. Because nowadays it's not just babysitting. It's stimulation and, and children having children learn through play right. so that they can become lifelong learners. So with this, we have noticed that these centers need a lot of help. Mm -hmm. So we put ourselves out there to through assist. our partner yes. to assist these centers. And uh, we also find recently that we have lots of children with disabilities in our centers also. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to get the training to work with these children because some of the teachers on a whole doesn't have the capacity to deal with these mm -hmm. so they get frustrated yes you know but they are entwined with our children our regular normal children but they have a disability yes you know so yes. it's kind of difficult it's at more times right yes. more challenging because some like all oh, the child not take can, can't understand the curriculum what am i going to do how am i going to you know get this child to understand what i want him to understand or her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now in what consists the mm -hmm. curriculum for early childhood education could you tell me some of the things that mm -hmm. make up the curriculum to our curriculum, active, active which is a high school curriculum, is a child-friendly curriculum. Through the curriculum, we focus on different aspects of the curriculum. It's an active participatory learning mm -hmm. where the children have choices. We also teach them through lang child language and thought. Mm -hmm. We it's also cool. have different subject areas. Kiddie eyes. Well, we don't really call them subject. We are call them kiddie eyes. Yes. Kid development. So, um, we are, as a primary school will have um, subjects. subjects. We have the kiddie eyes, the kid mm -hmm. developmental indicators. Kiddies. These are indicators will, which will help us to guide. guide the children according to what they need to know at different stages or different ages. So, we use our high school curriculum to guide them into that direction so that they can be prepared mm -hmm. for moving on to the next level. Yes. And one thing that the parents need to understand is that at this stage, we are just building awareness. We are yes. not trying to instill yes. concepts into the children. But what happens while we build awareness is that some children, they pick up, they understand the concept because of their cognitive development at that time. Yes, I can imagine that 
this early intervention would help these children when they go to grade school. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they will be better students. Yes. More social, better mm -hmm. social, social beings. beings. <laughs> better social, social beings. beings. Better. Cognitive mm -hmm. beings. Physically. And they may have more enthusiasm for mm -hmm. learning. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Because um, in the preschool setting or in the daycare setting, we try not to through our curriculum, which facilitates hands-on learning, we try to give the children those opportunity to work with materials so they can enjoy it. We don't yes. want to burn them out and drill them and have them doing rote Explore. learning. We have them exploring and learn and having fun while they are doing it. Mm -hmm. And with this curriculum, we see that it is working. It is working for us and for the children as well. Mm. And it makes our work easier. Right. <laughs> Once we get the children on board and we show them what to do, they get the information and they use it and they to guide. They do the guiding and then we just follow. Right. So it's yes. a shared learning. Yes. Right. Yes. So sometimes you prepare a lesson and some they may ask a question that you didn't even prepare for and then you yeah. now have to build on that question answer them and build on their knowledge yeah. one of the ways i try to explain the curriculum to parents i said our children they are enthusiastic about fire the fire truck right when you think about them playing with a fire truck you may say oh they're just playing with a truck but you know how many concepts can come out of that fire truck That's you true. can get how many windows how many wheels mm -hmm. the color the bit you know the construction of the truck what do you do with the truck so many different subject areas. you have language mm -hmm. you have mathematics you have science even social studies because who works on the, the fire truck so many things can come out of playing with a fire truck Safety issues. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> fire, water. Yes. Yes. And they would know what to do when there's a fire. When there's a fire. Exactly. Because we also invite these Person. persons to come in or we ask to them to come and visit their workplace. Right. And the children enjoy the field trips. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And they learn a lot. They Sometimes they go back home and share with their parents and they would like, wow, you know this? So they mm -hmm. are enthused. Mm -hmm. So how do you see your role? as early childhood education caretakers. How do you see your role? I would say that I am an advocate for getting this information out. You know, working, having been working with early childhood for almost 11 years, started out as a teacher, I am always pushing myself to learn more, get this information out to parents and um, the general public, sensitizing them. This is what happened. Get your child involved. Come to the schools. Participate in PTAs. You know, it's, an it's very, very exciting to know about the preschooler, the, the stage of development, everything gradually as, as, time, for, as time progresses. So for me, I, I am a voice and an advocate for early childhood. Okay. For me, I see my role as one which facilitates interaction mm -hmm. with the children and also parents. Yes. We can't forget Critical. the parents because the parents are the ones who provide the children for us to have jobs. So I see my role as one that, com that provides communication and interaction. Mm -hmm. With the children, the children need someone to interact with and they, they want to feel free that they can come to Teacher Julie and say, Teacher Julie, they talk anything with me. And we share discussion, we share conversations. Also with the interaction with the parents, parents also need persons to talk to. Besides um, just dropping off the children, mm -hmm. I can also interact with them and share with them, okay, this is what we did in school today, this mm -hmm. is what um, your child told me. Mm -hmm. And we also share what they learn. And with this, I feel that when, per when parents have this communication in and this interaction, they are comfortable. They are open and they are willing to assist, willing they are willing to, to participate, mm -hmm. they are willing to share. And once we invite them and they, are and they feel comfortable with this, we have no problem. We work in collaboration. To build on what they said, because I believe I'm an advocate and that uh, <laughs> person to counsel and help and be there for the children as well. Yeah. But um, I started out in a primary school. One of the reasons I came into early childhood is because I saw the need to, for early intervention as we keep using that mm -hmm. term. And I think one of the things that we are missing is the empowerment of our parents because if we don't empower the parents then they don't know how to be with the children so 
I believe that that is something I want to impact in early childhood where I work on empowering my parents and that's you know I keep trying to plan activities around that aspect that I'm not just making sure that the children are okay and developing well but I want to also empower my parents to be able to work along with their children and that's a very good point so in other words the parents remain parents yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because basically you are not the parents. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to be empower the parents, parents to be parents. Yes. And probably part of the problem we have today in our society is that there is a parenting crisis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this parenting crisis mm -hmm. is leading to a lot of antisocial behaviors in the society right. among yes. young people yes. and sometimes it, 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 it you know it starts from something simple teaching the these children at a very early age those social skills conflict resolution which is something we do conflict resolution mm -hmm. You know, and the psychologists would say that those impressionable years, yes. those early years, the to five from yes. up to five, five yes. years, yeah. are extremely important mm -hmm. in a child's development. Critical, critical. And we know, of course, some of them, the psychologist Erickson says that you know the first stage is the child is learning to trust, trust. Yes. trust and mistrust mm -hmm. are not to trust yes. between mm -hmm. zero and two years old yes. mm -hmm. like for example when the parents would bring the children a baby for say let's say three months or six months to a new center the parent or the child has to learn to trust that new person who's going to take, take, or, take over the right. child for the rest of the day. Yeah. So we have to ensure that we have built that trust within the child and the parent so that they feel comfortable. Yes. Yeah, attachment. So yeah. attachment yeah. Right. So you have to have an environment of trust. Yes. And then that child also has to learn to get along with other yes. children yes. and mm -hmm. to trust them. And that is something that is so important important in a human being's development. Mm. The ability to trust <laughs> at a very young age. And yes. as young as they are, if you really observe them, and I'm speaking about the youngest in our centers, they come in at mornings and sometimes they're there and their friends would come in and they want to hug their friends or a particular teacher would come in and they run because they know every day I get my hug and my kiss from that teacher so they build that trust they do, they already understand that you know this person I trust them I know them I love them we have a relationship and it is something amazing to look at mm -hmm. yes. and they know when they arrive this person gonna, is going to be the one who's going to take me Yes. Right. And what we also do encourage the caregivers to do, okay, so if you're not going to be here, yes. even yes. the babies are young, you so speak so to them, to them okay, I'm going to be out for five minutes or ten minutes, but I'll be back. Yes. Right. We speak right. to them, give them that language, mm -hmm. and they, you might not think they understand, but when they see you gone and you come back, they say, oh, then they start to give you that smile, they know, okay, she mm -hmm. really told me I'm going to be like, back, yeah, so sure. she's now back. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. yeah. And then, of course, we are told by Erickson that children learn autonomy mm -hmm. between two and four two years and four old. Years. Yes. That's why the routine is very important. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they have this sense of purpose, initiative. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. They learn to take In, yes. um, initiative. That's why we between four and five and five. Mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have a choice. Choice is yes. one of the main ingredients in our curriculum. Yes. Mm -hmm. We give them choices. Right. Yes. So, so sometimes really when you see adults or teenagers behaving in a particular way, you really have to question the early childhood formation. Yes. That's true. Yes, that is so true. No initiative. Mm -hmm. Can't trust mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. You have to be behind them all the time. 
the social Amazing. skills are Amazing. not there. Right. Mm-hmm. Something took place in the earlier years. Something took place. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I come back to that again. I re- realized that by grade five, when I was teaching in the primary school, that sometimes uh, the children are already set in their ways, and no matter what you do, it's kind of hard for you to get to them. I said, to no, break it, we to have to it. break this cycle even before they reach here. Mm-hmm. We have to begin in early childhood. So I don't believe in the idea of a child coming to the center with a particular behavior, and by the two or three years they're at the center, they leave with that. No, we have to show that child that okay this is not the correct way and we have to transfer that behavior direct it into the right direction and that's why we work with parents too because they have to understand the mechanisms Mm -hmm. that we use to control the behavior or guide the behavior around and also what we have learned too within the early childhood and the high school curriculum that we use is that we speak to children as to what we want them to do for example if a child is misbehaving we don't tell them oh you're not you're not behaving well, you're not making right choices. I would like for you to make right choices. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how we speak. Positive then. reinforcement. Yes. Positive reinforcement. And then they would in turn speak to their, their friends, the peers, friends, their peers, their peers the same way. Mm-hmm. And when the mm-hmm. parents hear this, they'll be so surprised. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, you mentioned an important point because mm-hmm. the children really have to work along with the parents yes. because you don't want them to be getting one thing at school. school at school and, and when they go home, home is mm-hmm. a total, total different, different thing yeah. otherwise children become confused indeed. very confused indeed <laughs> <laughs> very confused <laughs> but then the other thing too is that sometimes they go to the preschool and they come home and then daddy seeing them doing certain things and saying certain things and they say but where did you learn that? that? <laughs> and that's where they learned it too. Yes, that is true. We do yes. have those we things do have coming those in. Scenarios, <laughs> yes. Because yes, remember, yes. we have a diverse, <laughs> home. diverse have of this. cultures and mm-hmm. with right. schools. Mm-hmm. But and then we have task. to curb. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have to curb. It yes. sure. Now, June is celebrated as Child Month. Yes. 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 And yes. why June? <laughs> I know International Day of the Child is on June 1st. Yes, it is. For UNICEF, is celebrated on June 1st. And that is one of the reasons why we celebrate Child June. Month in June. Every year we try to um, curtail our theme around UNICEF's theme, which is around safety and security this year. But we went ahead and uh, our theme for this year is Children's Health safety and the security our priority mm-hmm. so we want to get that message out there that whatever choices we make for our children when it comes on their health their safety and security we have to make sure that it is formal foremost it is the most important thing that we do this year we planned a month of activities where we try to build awareness and we try to get the parents involved and we try to involve all our workers We began on the 31st of May and we had a grand opening to mark our 34th year and we had that in the circus just across our bank street from the circus and to commemorate the month, the opening of this month of celebration, we released 34 balloons to, you know, the children released these Mm -hmm. balloons. What I liked about that um, opening ceremony is that other than the director's um, brief remarks and the opening words from the Minister of Education, the Honorable Sean Richards, the children were the one who did everything throughout the, the ceremony and they, were, they did it well, yeah. right? Yes. Very, very good and you know, kudos to the teachers and all who prepared them. Mm-hmm. On the first, we also had um, the opening of the church services in the West Zone where we went to the Lighthouse Baptist Church to worship with all of the daycare centers and the nurseries, private and public, in that area. And the turnout, as usual, it was very good, right? On the Saturday, every Saturday throughout the month, we do Totally for Kids, where we come in with Uncle Terry and, you know, we have the children come in, they sing, the stories being read and persons are allowed to call in and prizes are there to be won. We've had three weeks already where we've had Salvation Army, Deep Bay, St. Paul's, Old Road, mm-hmm. Sandy Point, Industrial Site Daycare, Victoria Road Daycare and this Saturday we are going to have 
Baptist Academy and Tabernacle Daycare. So please listen in for 9 a.m. on Saturday. And on that day as well, Saturday the 2nd, Bastia had their breakfast walk. And that breakfast walk related to the health aspect. Mm -hmm. This year for the health aspect, one of the things that we tried is a breakfast walk for each zone. Bastia zone was on the 2nd. The East Zone was on the 9th and the last week, the 16th, was the West Zone. So we've covered all of our walks. Where they would walk from one point to the next, then they would um, socialize and have breakfast. On Monday the 4th, we had our zonal church service in the East Zone. The Tabernacle Methodist Church was the venue for this. Then on Tuesday the 5th, the Western Methodist Church, they hosted the Bass Day Zone. On Wednesday, from the 4th to the Friday, we tried something different. We recognized literacy with Love Day on the 6th. But throughout that week, we encouraged the centers to do something different. Not just have persons come in and read to the children on the 6th. But we, en we encouraged them to have a, a journey through books. So we had the schools set up different um, story time within their setting. For example, the three little pigs, they had their little set up, their props within their mm -hmm. centers and the children would dramatize these stories within the different centers. Industrial site might have chosen three little pigs, Victoria Road might, might have chosen the little red riding hood. So they had a choice to do whatever story that they, they felt like. Okay, and I know for the challenges they care, they did the gingerbread man, what mm. they did, some of the caretakers, they represented the old woman and the man. <laughs> then what they did from nursery one, they did one scene, go up to nursery two. So it was like the journey through books, they did it throughout the building. And then they ended in one of the preschool classrooms. Mm -hmm. The children enjoyed it, you know, it was a show. <laughs> and I believe in, and I saw some photos from Sandy Point and I was like, wow, they really went out of their way. And uh, they did Little Red Riding Hood. That is one of my favorite stories. So I only imagine how it went down. They transformed the entire um, setting. And it was lovely. Then at our promotional day on Thursday, the 7th, when the children and the teachers, they went out into the community to sensitize the public about child month and giving out flyers. On the 8th, we ch went over to Nevis to celebrate with our friends over there in their match. So we match, you know, we went up on the boat and we spent some time with match and then we came back down. And then on Tuesday the 12th, we had one of our biggest events mm -hmm. and one of our most innovative events. We had our chopped competition. Yes. Now, <laughs> that was a spectacular event. I mean, <laughs> the West Zone, they won the competition. Kudos. To Kudos season. to the cooks. Uh, we have some very good cooks in early childhood. That's One good. of the reasons why we came up with that idea is uh, to bring out the health aspect of uh, our theme. Because mm -hmm. we realize that um, if you listen on the airways, whenever there's a health talk and children are concerned, you hear them speak about diabetes and the concern mm -hmm. of the growing mm -hmm. cases of diabetes in our children. And we too are concerned about that. We are cooking for these children. And what we wanted to do is to utilize our local produce for the cooks to create dishes that they would use in the center for the children. So we had um, like the chop competition on Food Network. We had our secret ingredient and we had our cooks in teams of three from each zone. The secret ingredient was planting because we wanted to go in line with the Ministry of Tourism ingredient for this year. And I would say that it was a success it was. Another reason for that is because our cooks, our cleaners, our teachers, they are all part of the system. They are important to the daily operation of the center. And sometimes I believe that they do not feel too appreciated yeah, and they don't feel motivated. Yeah. But I believe after that event, yeah. they are motivated, the cooks mm -hmm. especially. And I know when I went back to my center, one of the cleaners asked the teacher trivia, <laughs> next year we're having a cleaners competition <laughs> too. So they, you know, yeah. they are motivated and they understand their importance. Mm -hmm. So you would say that the bringing awareness mm -hmm. to the important role of early childhood education that mm -hmm. that really was achieved during child month. It's you so think bad. that you had the desired outcomes? 
so yes. far. And your mm-hmm. objectives were achieved. Yes. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, one of the things that I realize is that people still consider early childhood as you know, our workers as minors. We are not mining children, we are molding children. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a lot that goes into it. Sometimes yep. when persons visit our schools and they smell the aroma coming out the kitchen, you know, they're like, wow. And I think uh, the judges at the competition, they were impressed. And our cooks don't just produce any and any kind of food for our children because our children would not accept any and anything. If it doesn't taste good, they're going to tell you. If it doesn't look good, they're Mm -hmm. not going to eat it. Yes, the presentation. Mm -hmm. That brings me to another question. What role does food and nutrition play in early childhood development? Hmm. I'm going to give it all one. A very, very pivotal role. We have to keep our children healthy. Yes. With that, we have to ensure that they get the nutrients that, that they need from the food that we are providing for them. Mm-hmm. Because if they're not eating the right foods, they're not going to function. Right. And with this, we see it as one that is very important. Now, with the meals that we provide for the children, we have a menu. There's a menu where the cooks would have to follow. Six weeks. A six-week menu mm-hmm. where the cook would have to follow throughout the, the time. Ta- the, every, every day they have to prepare something different for the, the children. And we, it, it, it was planned through the assistant of the nutritionist, the nutritionist from the health health nutrition health health. Yeah, yes. yes, she assisted us in planning this because we want our children to be healthy, physically healthy. And with this... We find that it will um, enhance our children' productivity in terms of producing, in terms of working in the in at school and learning. So mm-hmm. that is what we find. We're even expanding it also to the private schools also. Mm-hmm. Yes, some of the some of the, the the things on the menu might be costly for them, but what it is, we are pushing the healthy oh, aspect cool. of it. You know, because sometimes they just open a pack of ramen ramen spaghetti and just cook that and open a pack of frozen veg and mix it up together and give children that to eat but you know that is not healthy so we're trying to work assiduously with these private workers private homes especially and the private schools to please stay on a healthy diet healthy meal local produce yes lots of local produce that's what we are encouraging local 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 and we're also encouraging the schools to have their own gardens right Right. the backyard gardens because children are developing of course Mm -hmm. their brains and their bodies and and especially at a very early age they need the the right right nutrients and and so on and if they are not going food (laughs) given the right food and the nutritious food Mm. it affects their development their cognitive and social um, and physical Physical development development. and they are the future of our population and we can't be feeding them these unhealthy foods Mm -hmm. where they will be feeling sick all the time can't attend school so we have to ensure that we provide good nutrients and feed the children properly in our Mm -hmm. centers so that's an important part of early childhood development and then proper nutrition we're also encouraging the parents to work along with us because for example sometimes we have fruit days assigned to our schools some we have two days per week you bring fruits not the other days of center would provide the fruits but then you have some parents although we instead insist that they bring fruits they bring snacks and the snacks is like corn curls sweet biscuits these sweet sweet box drinks and you know we are trying at least let them come on board with us and see what how important it is to maintain a healthy lifestyle for the yes, children. You cut out all of these yeah, snacks. Yeah, it's like they go picnic. I know at some centers, at mm. mines especially, they cannot eat those on the premises right. unless it's a party or something. So mm. even if they bring them, mm. or you can eat them on your way home with your yeah, mother. Yeah, you put them, leave the them in their bags and you just give them, If we're promoting yes. healthy eating, then we can't have these... Um, 
and even the juice you don't bring any juice from home because we provide we juice we provide juice store. right and if you're going to bring any juice it should be local no box drink unless as i said on a little you know you want to give them a little treat mm-hmm. then they would and get that right mm-hmm. I remember once ago you used to see a lot of rotten teeth and so on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, you know, <laughs> a lot of children with rotten teeth. It's true. You know, and, and maybe sugars, you know. Yes. A lot of sweet yes, stuff and yes. so on. And not proper dental care. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you see two front teeth gone and then they start to say, all I want for Christmas is my two front, front teeth. teeth. <laughs> and all this kind of thing, you know. And but it really, mm. You ask about the nutrition and development. In our centers, after six months, you cannot bring any bottle no for bottles. our babies. We cut Whatever that. is cooked in the kitchen, mm-hmm. they eat. Right. So the food is pureed for them at a you know good te- texture, sorry, and they have to eat it. Some mm-hmm. of them they're already eating it at home, so you don't even because it's so boiler at a texture yes. for them to you know mm-hmm. dissolve, you know properly eat it. We don't have to parade. But after six months, six, by six months, right. no bottles, pot food. Yes. Right? And mm-hmm. that helps. Mm-hmm. Strengthens them. They're, yes, it helps a lot. Okay, so good. So your your team, children's health, health safety, safety and, and security. security. Our priority. Our, not security. Our, our, our is everyone's priority. Indeed. Because we have to work along with families and communities. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, we've touched a lot on the health as a priority. Mm-hmm. We just spoke about that. What about the safety and security? How do you go about making that Hmm. a priority in these early Early childhood childhood centers? We do this based on um, our process, a licensing process, and also to our regulations, our standards, and our policies that we have in place currently. For our licensing process, there have to be enough space so it should be sufficient space for the children to interact they have enough space for them to interact so for the preschool we allot them 25 square feet per child okay and in the nursery setting 40 square feet for babies this gives them you know the authority to do what they want you know on the outside and the same for the inside okay they have to make sure that the children can run up and down do what they develop them themselves so for that we th- that is one of the main main regulations and standards that you have that they have to adhere by okay the 40 square feet it goes along it does not include the space outside of the classrooms the bathrooms for example the bathrooms the kitchen the hallways that is not measured as the the spacing for the children you know it goes among the the settings that they would have and also for the uh, for the babies the cribs that they should not be so close that they can touch another child or pull somebody's hand or something they have to be you know just in enough space in that even the caregiver can go f- through the, the crib to assist that child in need mm-hmm. you understand and they can be able to even when they're sleeping the mm-hmm. preschoolers when they're sleeping you can't have all the beds together you know right. which, which is, is not, not a safe, safe thing, thing to, to do, do. Mm-hmm. so they have to adhere to our standards and our procedures that we have so those are some of the minimum standards yes as well as each center is expected to have fire extinguisher right an emergency right. plan yes we Evacuation. have to do um, emergency drills yes. tsunami drills you know to ensure that the children know what to do in the event of an emergency yes, yes. Mm-hmm. and also too that's why we try to encourage the centers not to overcrowd right that's not a major problem their centers mm. yes we know um this is your livelihood but however the children still have to be kept safe right, right. because with our evacuation procedure the children has to learn what to do in case of an, an emergency what to right. do in case of a fire so if they have enough space where they can practice these drills if uh, god forbid this has to happen they know what to do right. and this, this right. the space is there for them to execute and implement yes that is why we also have um child ratios 
okay. staff child ratios they have to apply to that ratio mm -hmm. once you're over that ratio that means you have too many children in your setting and you know you cannot manage all those children mm -hmm. okay so for example we have the three to four year olds one adult to 12 children understand the younger ones one to six one to four one to three for children under one so we have to adhere to these ratios yes if you find your capacity cannot fill up the amount of children then you know that you are you are overcrowded okay how do you look for signs of child abuse for example mm -hmm. and how do you address it if it is identified recently i had um, a case with um with that at one of my schools that i am attached to um the child came to the center and uh, the teacher found out that the two converse conversating with the child the child said um she was hit with a comb or a shoe and a mark was left on the child's skin so i was called in as the teacher attached to the school the resource officer attached to that school and uh, she i encouraged the supervisor to write a report on what she said take and then she will forward it to my department to my boss and then from there we will contact social services, social services, social services. Mm -hmm. to assist us in dealing with that matter mm -hmm. so i know it was done she did the report and it was sent on to the relevant personnel so they have been dealing with that situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now what are some of the ethical standards mm -hmm. for um, early childhood education caretakers teachers um, what are some of the personal and educational qualities that is required to work in these centers for the education part of the requirements mm -hmm. for the caregivers we have been reviewing our policy mm -hmm. so with our policy we have put in place qualifications for caregivers teachers so for someone who wants to open a center they if it is a nursery they have to provide certain information for example they have to provide certificate of training in the area of early childhood. childhood. It's no longer you get up and just open a, a center right. or a school. For the teacher to be a teacher, it's not what we have. What we are encouraging now is for persons who have the basic sub sixty subjects. For example, math, social studies, history, geography, and a natural science. They have to have that. Also, for the for the teachers they must have a first aid training certificate this this help us to manage safety into in our setting for the the nurseries as I mentioned before they should have the first aid and the CPR training mm -hmm. and what we try to encourage them to do is we when when the early child put on the in-service training we have them attached to one of the established, established centers, centers so they could see what's happening in the centers and see the procedures that are taking place so they can have an idea what's happening mm -hmm. okay now, now what are some of the personal qualities that you would look for for people to work in these centers because when you're dealing with children you're dealing you know well we need persons who can interact with children yes. persons who are caring child persons friendly. who are child friendly, friendly. Yes. persons who can uh, socialize but not only with the children alone but with the staff and mm -hmm. with parents mm -hmm. who have a knowledge of early childhood development of child development right 
So because have to have that a, background. Yeah, because it is such a critical time right. in um, in terms of development. Yes, so yes, yes. the so people who work knowledge. around children mm -hmm. must be of a particular kind. Yes, and they and must have that passion. Well. Right. It's very important. Be willing to learn. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot to learn in early childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Our curriculum is one that is it's a research um, curriculum, which mm -hmm. means that developments are taking place because it's an ongoing research yes. curriculum so if things evolve every year they are tr they have um, extended training and workshops every year i think mostly in may so we when these new things come on board we have to be ready to open up we may have to change the way that we change a child's diaper you can't say this is the way we normally do, do it, it so we're going to do it that way no okay they say that this way is not necessarily the right way so let's change how we do it and do it according to the curriculum according to the standards mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay we'll soon go to the phone lines okay. okay but the ministry of education is in the final stages of drafting a child policy yes. a national child policy yes. mm -hmm. why a national child policy mm -hmm. and what would be some of the important elements of this child policy and what would guide this policy what our ECD policy is, it's a set of policies that governs and help to support development of young children. The policy helps to promote holistic child development and the program. It also addresses the, the physical and mental, social and spiritual needs of the young child. Simply, it's a roadmap for the government organizations to invest and implement early childhood care and education development programs. For this, the strategic objective is to ensure that all children in St. Kitts and Nevis are adequately prepared right. for the entry into primary school and mm -hmm. for lifelong learning. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's what our mission and vision statement says. Okay, you're mm -hmm. talking about, although it's a, it's a national child policy, yes. mm -hmm. it has to be guided by something. So in other it's words, practices. because of course we are not operating in isolation, mm -hmm. saying it is not a place that is operating in, in, uh, in isolation. Mm -hmm. So Regional practices which we see are best practices, mm -hmm. regional policies mm -hmm. that you know are working and workable, as well as um, UNICEF standards. UNICEF do studies, you know, from time to time, whenever they do a project, there's a report on the project where you see your strengths your weaknesses mm -hmm. and areas that need development so according to these reports and other you know developments in early childhood then these policies as well as the needs within our country so there must be certain legal and social framework yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. that would guide the, mm -hmm. yes. the policy for example mm -hmm. the convention on the rights, rights of, of the, the child. child yes the CRC yes um, NACI, and the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against yes. Women and Girls. Along the Child Welfare and Protection Board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Social Welfare, Social Health, Welfare Health. Department. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Because children's rights mm -hmm. are very important. Do you have a copy of children? Because some people feel as a children don't have any rights. Yeah. Yeah. They, they want the time. <laughs> In and parents to tell you, look, from the minute you have any right, your child inside here, you, you, you know, you're, you're under your own roof, and, and you, you're feeling, you, you, ain't got, you, you know, that sort yes, of a thing? That's yes, why it's yes, encouraged you. that one is um, But children, in children yes. have rights. Right. They do. All children have rights. Yes, they right. have a right to an education. And maybe it is important for some parents who are it's listening to understand oh, what the rights, because I have heard certain parents say, what rights could a child have? What rights? A right to a voice. They have no rights. <laughs> Food. <laughs> but children have rights. And some of our schools actually have these conventions erected. Posted. So when mm -hmm. you enter the mm -hmm. building, you will see them. Because we understand that it is important. Some feel that from the minute you start talking about rights, you need to be working for yourself and so on. <laughs> Give a, you have to understand when to take back that control from the child. Remember, it's shared control. That, this, that is one thing we encourage within our environment, shared 
control some of our teachers don't like that idea because they feel like it means children have a say but shared control means that we are both working to accomplish what we need to accomplish within the environment mm -hmm. and I think the convention of the rights of the child once the parents understand it they would understand the shared control and how to better execute this shared yep. control mm -hmm. one of the rights of course of the child is the right to freedom of expression yes, yes. A voice. Mm -hmm. and we grow up sometimes you can't even offer an opinion <laughs> or to to respond shut up shut up shut, shut up nobody talking to you <laughs> speak when you're spoken to but our curriculum yes. supports children to Respect express them. themselves yes yes so children must be able to express themselves. The child mm -hmm. has a right to education, yes. to food, to, to, to shelter, clothing. clothing, a safe environment, a loving environment, has a right to both parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's also a right of the child. Yes. yes. You know, but sometimes and, and <laughs> people need to be taught the rights of of children, the rights of the child. Another thing with the policy is that it would help to bring that balance between the policy which guides early childhood education in sync it's and the needs is because we are all within that same realm of um, operation. So no longer would we have where Nevis would be on one framework and we would be on another. We would both be aligned Together. Yes. in the same framework. Mm. Now, learning through play hmm. <laughs> is a concept we hear all the time. How do children learn through play? Because some people feel as though they're just playing. They're not doing anything serious. But playing, people learn through playing. Yes. <laughs> When you think of people playing a basketball game or a football game, it is not just that they're playing a game, but there are certain things that they learn as well. They learn how to interact with each other. They should learn how to follow rules and guidelines, how to share, how to take criticism, not to cheat, rules of the game. You don't move the goalposts when the game doesn't start and all that sort of thing. So, tell us, how have you seen children learning to play? And what are some of the skills? Learning to play is what we promote within our environment. <coughs> what some of the skills are when the children learn, um, are playing, they learn, as you mentioned earlier, they learn how to share. They learn also how to put back things where they where they are, we are, for example, if they're working in the block area, what we do, we have pictures in the block area. Say, so if we have a shape of a triangle block, they know, okay, when I'm finished, they learn how to clean up, when I'm finished, that goes back there. So we also mm -hmm. promote that in, in our environment. Also, children also learn mm -hmm. about other person's <coughs> feelings, emotions. Mm -hmm they would say, okay, teacher, is, um, you're not feeling well today because they see you're not looking normal. Or they would, they would say, teacher, um, Tom is crying. Why is Tom crying? He said his belly is hurting him. So they get to um, share about other person's emotion or other person's fear. Activities also. What um, also they, all, they learn to is the activities that we plan for them. For example, if we have an activity where we want the children to, say, match, we give them the appropriate materials mm -hmm. for them to accomplish this matching activity. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, it, can, it stems also from <coughs> their interest also. Yes. They can be outside playing and we're just fascinated over this object they see outside and from that you can produce a lesson for them and they would learn right so the physical 
the cognitive, cognitive the social, social the emotional yes. and the psychological yes. everything is being developed um, so place intertwined mm -hmm. yes and the materials you know. within the setting yes. are deliberately, you know, placed there for, the, for all mm -hmm. areas of their development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We try to encourage um, the teachers to use low cost, no cost, cardboard box, cornflakes box, whatever, oats pack, oats box, macaroni boxes, and do, you know. You, you know, you, you learn so much, even as adults. You learn from children. Yes. yes. It's not just the children that learn from the adults. But when you look at children sometimes and their interactions, mm -hmm. you are really learning from them. Yes. You know, you see two children playing and one of them, you know, ain't happy or they lose or so. They take up their bat and the ball and they're gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You know? Or they may be in the house, they were playing and maybe we are playing and I didn't do something that she wants me to do. And she will figure, okay, fine, I'm not playing with you then. I'm not playing with you anymore because, you know, I want to tell you what to do and I decide, well, I don't want to do that. I want to do something else, you know. And I decide, okay, fine, mm -hmm. I'm going to stay over here since you don't want to, you know. <laughs> so you have those things coming out and yes. then somebody may come and say, but... But but I'll, I will, I'll do it then, you know. They may turn around and say, "I'll do it then," because they realize the that yes. they realize that in not doing what they're asked to do, they're hurting the other person's feelings. So mm. that they, you know, they decide, "Okay, I don't like to hurt. I don't like the way that you're looking." So mm. I'm gonna go along and work with you. Right. <laughs> we get a lot of that. So there you're understanding emotions from a very young age and the importance of not hurting each other's mm -hmm. feelings and working together. Mm -hmm. And they find their as own empathy, solution as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, sharing empathy and sympathy towards yes, one another. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. Great discussion. But we are going to go to the phone lines and okay. hear what the people have to say. I'm sure there are a few Colors. mothers maybe and fathers who have questions pertaining to early childhood education. So we are going to open the lines, the numbers to call, 1718-577-2916. That's the overseas number, 1718-577-2916. And the local number is 465-2555. 465-2555. The local number, we await your calls. Someone is on the Sorry. line. Working for you, good afternoon. So, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You, you okay? Yes. I am one of the biggest supporters of all the Thank you very much. But my biggest concern happens to be where okay the parents have been given everything has been laid out for the parents by government other agents and everybody but we find a lot of parents going to collect their children after closing hours long after when the employees of the early childhood development are parents themselves and have to go home and look after their children and we find some of these parents coming to pick up the children fully and I keep on wondering when it is going to stop because we're stopping, we're taking away the, from the parents to be the two parents that they are to be. So what are you all going to do to put a stop to that? So I'll be listening now here, and if I have to call back, so be it. Okay, thanks for calling. What we try to encourage the parents to do is to, if you're going to pick up late, inform the center. So at least the center has an idea that you'll be picking up the child late. However, we know that the workers as well have their children and their families to go home to. So with that communication, it will aid in preventing persons picking up mm -hmm. the children late. Please. Also, we are currently looking into the idea of once ago they were asked to pay a late fee. And uh, this late fee would be $15. However, some persons genuinely sometimes run late because they may have a meeting that extended beyond expectations and some are 
constantly and chronically late every day and as the gentleman said we are parents ourselves we need to be there for our children yes. as well mm -hmm. so one of the talks is increasing that um, late pickup fee and if they do not pay that fee the child cannot return to school without that fee being paid and this would not come just from the centers it would be implemented from the top down and we hope that we don't have to reach there but parents begin to understand that we love our children but at the end of the day we too have to go home and take care of our families kind that we see in a sort of punishing the child mm. for the transgression of, of the, the parents. parents that is true and that yes. is you know in everything and that is one of that's the thin line that we have in early childhood because we always have to consider our children and the parents i think they use that against us because they know that we are advocates for children they know we care for the children and mm -hmm. they feel that mm -hmm. oh they're not going to do anything because it's going to um it's going to cause it's going to affect the child and they don't want to negatively affect the child but there has to be a point where we draw that line and we make them to understand that we do mean it we don't mean to hurt our children but you also have to be considerate so that's true you know and it would not necessarily hurt the child because they would have to stay home from their work to be with that child you know we'll be hearing a lot in the news these days about you know separating of children at the border from the appearance um, or entering it and, and, and you know it created a lot of um, stir yes. right around the world because mm -hmm. parents should not be separated They're really from from their children, children. From their children. And, and you know sometimes when the elephants fight it is the grass that gets trampled mm -hmm. that's true you know, and now we are seeing some, you know, something I think now is being done to, to reverse somewhat so. that, that policy. But you always have to protect children. That is yes. true. Yes. That, that is, is why true. I still feel that if we communicate with the parents, mm -hmm. we get to explain to them, okay, why you need with to come teachers. early to pick up mm -hmm. the children. Once we keep at them and talking to them, encourage them, tell them if you can't make it. Here's another call. Mm -hmm. Working for you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One of the things that bother me is that when parents are late and you go to town, especially if there's a function in town on a Friday afternoon, mm -hmm. and you see these same parents lining as if the teachers don't have a home to go to or they don't have anything to go to. And so... Uh, I don't feel any sympathy for uh, charging them a fee because sometimes when I hear uh, the, pair, the teacher saying oh I didn't leave from here until 6 o'clock that's not nice so I don't have it because I have a grandchild that go to the Challengers daycare center and so uh, I don't feel any any sympathy for some people when they leave the the uh the teachers stranded and they have to go home especially on a friday afternoon thank you you're welcome, you're welcome. also to guess what sometimes we put a fee in place and the parents say okay i didn't pay off that so, just, so yeah. we just keep at, have to get at the parents and talk mm -hmm. to them encourage them send somebody to pick up your child call me let me know you're going to be late because sometimes they, they just say, okay, $15 to pay, $20 to pay. I can pay that. We have another caller, uh, Julia. Uh, working for you, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I don't know if I understand the lady right. What you say? When the parents come for the child late, they pay a fee. And if they no, pay the fee, what do you do with the no. child? Not anymore. Not happened. anymore. We used to do that. Oh, oh, they just come for them early now? No. No. But oh, some yes, of them do, but they don't have to pay the fifteen dollars for the school fee. We need to keep the fee because I used to work in that night deck here and you come in the the, the latest you give them to quarter to five. Quarter past five, five thirty, you got to walk home with the child. And they need to come in and say nothing. Lord sorry, all the same is sorry. You, you tell the member you have to pay fifteen dollars tomorrow when you bring the child. Yeah. But you tell me to the supervisor. They're telling me the next day, the supervisor said, don't pay the school, don't pay the, the, the late fee. 
<laughs> yeah, you, no, you, you, these things you all have to be seriously because you have to go home to look after your own That's family. True. That's true. You're in there, sometimes you go in 7 o'clock just to make the children them, who parents go to work early, and you're in there a minute to 6 and after 6. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there is nothing for it. You're getting one standard salary. But then when, to, when they come late, you can't get them to pay the $15. And again, on the other hand, when a child reach to the, 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 the preschool section, they don't learn to write in there. Oh. We give them the skills, the pre-skills, in, in order for them to reach to that stage. But the pre, the pre skill is. Well, for example, we give them things to lace, to develop their fine muscles. We give mm. them things to trace. We give them things to lock together. Mm. We give them things to color. Mm. So those are the skills for them to develop their fine muscles in order for them to Wait, reach so the writing stage. To trace? Yes. yes. So you give them a pencil, let us start to trace things. Then we don't necessarily have to give them a pencil. We could have a line mm -hmm. and we give them mm -hmm. some small blocks and they would fit that on the line. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't encourage exercise books. Oh, pencils. well, I had two grandson. One used to come go at night with me, and one got to a private one. And the one who got to the private school have a better handwriting than the one who used to go at night with me. Well, that one so, who goes uh, who went to at night with you, sorry to cut you off, that child probably would uh, pick up at a, a later stage. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can't compare children, but we do no, do it's not a later you. stage, you know. We I, when we go to the school now, the, 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 the primary school, and he goes to kindergarten, they make him nice and saying the child ain't developed yet. We do. So if you home, don't take the child and teach the child to write with a pencil. He, 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 the, the child is, is, to me, the oh. child is back up in there. Carla, it's not that we don't um, do writing, but we do not force the writing upon the children. As I said before, we set the environment for the children to develop these writing skills. We have in our centers pencils, crayons, papers, all of these materials, and we also have print in the environment. I know within the environment that I'm in and that I've been in before, the children would go and copy these prints from the mm -hmm. environment. They see the Students. words and they would copy them onto the paper. And they do this without being forced because That's it is known that when we force writing upon children, they lose interest very early on. And that is something that we don't want to do. So no. we create the environment for we them. Teach. And mm -hmm. the children, I have seen children who would write in the environment. It's not mm -hmm. that we don't do it at all. <coughs> okay, caller, we have other persons on the okay, line. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. Writing. Thanks for calling. Working for you. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. I thought when the parents leave the children late, do not they bring the money at the same time to collect the child? And if not, I think if you all put down your foot one day, carry the child cross by the station and leave it. One of them will learn from that. Thank you. We are not allowed to take the children to, to the, the station. station. And, um, and I think, you know, it would kind of traumatize the child if we do that. Mm -hmm. And as we indicated, no longer, once ago, when we took the late fee, they pay that late fee when they come to collect the child or they bring it first thing in the morning when they drop off that child. But as we indicated, that um, practice has since um, stopped for some years now. We do not collect late fee. However, it is being discussed in this new policy that we are having. Um, you know, it is one of the considerations that may be placed within that policy. Okay, so most of those calls were related to pickups. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that these are not persons who are in the in settings. settings. Yes, you know, they yes. see the need for parents to come. So parents, try and pick up your children early. Because you. I have one worker who, she has a child in preschool also attend another center. And sometimes she is being called because she has to be there with late with other people's children. And that center that her child is at, she has to pay a late fee if she's late to pick up her child. And it's a private center. Mm -hmm. Some of them are probably happy to drop them off. Mm -hmm. So why would they want to pick them up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Exactly. That is so true. Because they see us as a safe place, yes, but still we have our lives too. Right. Okay, so... We've discussed the, the benefits, of course, for early childhood education. Some of them, you said, were improved social skills. Mm -hmm. 
So it's important that parents know that what the benefits are of their children attending an early childhood education center. That, you know, their children are learning social skills. Um, that they would be better prepared for when they enter into kindergarten, um, elementary school, that you're helping them with their attention spans. Um, the ability to listen and to follow directions, to work independently, all of which really are life skills that you're teaching at a very young age. And the enthusiasm for lifelong learning and civic responsibility and all of that. So parents investing in their children, in attending these centers, it's really a worthwhile investment. Yes. And that is what you would have said. Yes, yes it is. Mm -hmm. Just to touch on that, that's why it's important for them to attend the parent teachers yes, developmental sessions cushion. that we have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes parents complain that they don't come because maybe at some center, it's the same thing, but um, some centers we try to curtail uh, um, a program for parents where they can learn whether it's about their development, their health or the child's development. One of the activities that we've tried at our center is a day in the preschool classroom where the parents come to the PTA, they um, go out after we've met briefly, they go to their child's classroom and within that class they become the child and they learn about the daily routine, what goes on throughout the day in their child's life at the preschool. Right. So parental involvement is it's crucial. Pretty, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And that is something we are asking our parents to, you know, to raise the bar on. Be more active in their child's life. Not because it's just preschool, but if you start now, it, you know, paves the way for when they develop and as they go to primary and high school, you would be there continuously throughout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now... As preschool teachers, how do you think you can accomplish your teaching goals? What are some of the, the ways you think you can accomplish your teaching goals? What do you do to know that your goals are being accomplished? Let me put the question in another way. <laughs> or how do you know? What are the indicators okay. that you have to know that your goals are being accomplished? Proper prior planning, the mm -hmm. TPs, <laughs> proper mm -hmm. prior planning. And that is something that um, I've always learned from early, from being in early childhood. Proper prior planning, meaning the plan, have an idea of what you're going to yes. do with the children, what is going to happen after you have executed your lesson. After executing your lesson, um, how do you think that the children responded? What were their reactions? Did they grasp the concepts right. that you wanted to portray to them? So you're checking the children's progress. Right. Observation. Observation. And, so right. and assessment. And then you as a teacher now will in turn try and better for the next activity. Mm -hmm. Improve on whatever area skills you were lacking in order to Yes. You know. That's why some of the lessons we ask a lot of open ended questions yes. you know, to see, you know, what the children understand and to try to guide them in their language and also their cognitive development. Mm -hmm. And as I say, we do a lot of observations. Yes. A lot of um, anecdotes. We take notes and uh, you know anecdotes are actual True. what you see and not subjective mm -hmm. but objective right. yes, the objective so from that we are able to use it to determine where what we gave to the child what they had and what we need, need. to build on yes. mm -hmm. so we use you know it's continuous assessment and as i said observation we are continuously observing them not while they're doing them um, a small group activity only while they're eating when they go to the bathroom, when they're in the sleep room, when they're mm -hmm. outside playing, mm -hmm. because all of this builds for our activities. We yes. use, they may be outside and be talking about um, 
the dragon and the monster and the fire from the dragon mouth. Hey, do an activity on dragons, you know. Build the awareness of these things, building on what they know already. So it's continuous assessment. That's how we know that um, what we've um, tried to get the concepts, so they understand them. To add to that is the interaction. Mm -hmm. I always believe in the interaction and the communication with the children. Yes. Once you get that um, with the children, the, um, you'll feel, okay, you communicate with the children, the children will be able to tell you, talk yes. to you, feel mm -hmm. free open up to you and um when you engage in their play also children like that um yep. the teacher joining with joining their play okay so, so when you communicate with them yes as you just said what are you helping the children to develop language, language. right Social yeah, language. you're helping them to develop language critical thinking Crit mm -hmm. critical you help yes you're helping them to develop the ability to listen, listen. and to Speak. speak to speak mm -hmm. which is basically about language yes. do you read aloud to the children yes, yes, yes. we do we story have our time. story time even to the babies as well yes, it's a on, must. on yes, their yes. daily routine there's a story time segment where they will have the after devotion they will sit in a circle on a mat and we sit at the children's level where the children could see our lips moving mm -hmm. and they could hear us so we have that story time for them and mm -hmm. we also encourage a print which environment for because the older ones. I, you know, once mm -hmm. alone we are going, you used to hear about these bedtime stories. Mm -hmm. And and he used to think really, but it's bedtime stories just because they want to put me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that is the purpose of a bedtime story. Mm -hmm. But later on, I learned that by reading to children, you're actually developing. You, 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 yes. you know, cognitive development yes. and, and you're opening up their world, their mind, their imagination mm -hmm. and language yes. and all of that sort of a thing. I used to think, well, you just oh want me point. to go to sleep. Working for you. Good afternoon. Oh yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Good yes. afternoon. This is um, this is well, it might not be such a great help to you all because it's a way back in the '60s in Britain, Britain, London, London. Well, yes, you take your child. To the nursery, the government nursery, they call it a nursery, you know, when we say decade, it means the same thing, isn't it? Yes. yes. So, you go there, there from 7 in the morning to 6, but um, half past 5, you have to go there to collect. But if you go 6 and a half to 6, you make an excuse, but you cannot keep it up because they will disqualify you because they say 6. Hmm. You see what I mean? Yes. I don't mean that you all must get harsh, harsh with this, <laughs> no, but that's a way back yes. in the 50s. You take your child when he's three months old. I know because I did it, you see? Okay. But then what I did, I looked for a job that will suit the nursery. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yes. Yes, so I didn't have no problem. Mm -hmm. Well, the nursery generally, um, what what they did, they they um they use they use their own you know di their diaper or whatever you know in in I think it used to be it wasn't pamper those time those type diapers. of things we have it used oh, to be diaper. Was. So when you take your child at that little age, they they change they wash that one that you had on your child. Mm -hmm. and get it ready and put these on you understand yes wow. yes and get yours ready that they change when you reach and if it dirt you know they wash it and get it dry and when you come it, the child will have that on you know from yes. from from what you take clean yes yes and they feed them there yeah. and they give them little toys and so to play and they have a little garden outside you know like and and just as you said, I get them, give them a little, when they grow up, well, you, you take them there for, from, you keep them there until the time for the for school. Yes. I think it's five years old, you know? Yes. yes. And they, they treat them very, very well. They used to have um, a lot of pe two people very well looking after them, and they had a matron there. Yes. Okay. okay. Thanks, Thanks, for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Another caller. Working for you. Good afternoon. <laughs> yes, sir. Come back again. Yes. I just want to see if I get it right. If the, the young lady answered and said, if the lady, if it stopped or yeah. what? Because my concern is this. On the 18th of September, 
a parent asked me in school opening tomorrow, the nursery, Independence Day, because what? She wants she tries to come go to the nursery. We have to put a stop to the parents and make them. The parents, I just want to understand it clear. If the parents stop from paying the late fee, and what time the centers do? Because I know centers used to close at 4, they went to 4 30. Now I'm hearing 5 o'clock, so I want to it's going to go into the evening. Hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. thank you. What we have, we have a shift system where some workers will come in at 7 and some will come in at 9. The 7 o'clock workers work to 3 and the 9 o'clock workers work to 5. So, for the late fee now, what you are saying, we have put a pause on that and we are still reviewing it in our new policy. So, when we get confirmation on that, we will let you know whether it's in or it's out. To build on what teacher Juliana said about the um, time frame, in the, we have uh, two preschools only, we are from three to five. Those centers are from eight to four. We have a grace period, however, your child should be picked up at four. But there's a grace period, you know, because you may finish working for, you, you know, we give you a little time to get there by 4.30. In the daycare centers where we start from zero to five years old, in the preschool section still, eight to four. We give you a grace period of 4.30. I think what happens a lot, because the nursery is attached, you have even preschool teachers coming, sorry, parents coming after 5.5. Five. It's the same in the, um, sorry, the nursery. The cut off time is 4.30 a grace period up until 5. Five. And I think that needs to be understood because I think parents are thinking cut off time is 5 and grace period is 5.30 6 o'clock. <laughs> no, the cut off time is 4.30, the no, grace period is up five. until 5 p.m. Okay. Hmm. I hope that answers the caller's question. Okay, we were talking about um, training. In terms of training for your staff, what kind of training do you have? Because you need a quality staff. Because if you don't have a quality staff, then that is going to affect your environment. It's going to affect your best practices, practices. And, mm -hmm. and all of that. So mm -hmm. what is there in terms of training at the early childhood um, education unit? For the training, we put on training for the nursery persons, the caregivers, and we also put on training for the Pre the preschool teachers. For the nursery caregivers, we have training, for example, we give them, um, we train them in um, child development, we train them in how to plan activities for the children. Mm -hmm. And this sometimes goes to a uh, two-week training. Also, too, we also bring in facilitators to conduct these training because we see the need for these because it's important for them to get this training. For the, um, preschool. the preschool teachers now, we do training as well and we do attachment. We get them to go to different centers to spend a, a day or sometimes a week. They go to the observations and then they would do a, a training session with the children. So that is what we have in place at our our end at sure. the Early Childhood Development Unit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now I think that you can also be trained at the Clarence, Clarence Fitzroy Brand yeah. College. Yes. 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 You can be the associates, is it? Yes. yes. And Tita Travia also did that um, <laughs> training at the CFB mm -hmm. College. Yes. And there's also to the university program for um, yes. early childhood and family studies mm -hmm. so we have mm -hmm. options so we are encouraging all staff to sign up get yourself qualified and advance yourself within mm -hmm. early childhood become current <laughs> yes become current because it's no longer that you're looking at early childhood teachers as just te um, minors. Minors, minors and mm. they're just there we are equal as these primary school teachers so we are highly recognized now and for us, for a person to see that, 
we have to take the responsibility to show persons and go out and get the training. Mm -hmm. Certainly. You know, yes. Teacher Juliana, that is so correct. Because I recall while we were in teacher's training college, mm -hmm. we were the first batch. Yes, and uh, we had, we were, you know, there were classes that we had with primary and high school teachers. And sometimes when we have assignments, they would ask, all of that work you have to do, all of that, uh, you are doing that too? Me and my thought is, you know, they didn't expect it to be so extensive. They expected it. I really don't know what they expected, but they, they didn't expect it to be so extensive as their program. But it is a developed area. It yes, is it developed. is. I, I don't know if the paradigm shift has yet hit. You know, the, the, the public in saying it's... The, I don't know if they understand that this shift has happened and it is going to evolve even more. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the most crucial, crucial. Um, <laughs> areas mm -hmm. in terms of development yes. of the human being. Yep. Yes, it is. Those early years, yeah. formative mm -hmm. years. Those formative years. Right. Yes. Now, is there anything else that you'd like to say in terms, you know, of child month? Anything, you know, because we are still in the month of June, mm -hmm. we still have some time left. Any activities that you would like the, Certainly. the public to be aware of mm -hmm. before we go? Today, let me just go to today. Today we are having our fun day at the St. Paul's ground. It was an all-day event where we have schools going in at different intervals with their children mm -hmm. and engaging in different activities. They have um, the movie room. They have um, stimulating areas where they get toys to play with. They have a sporting area. We try to cover all aspects of uh, our theme at that funding. Then on Friday, I'm encouraging everybody to go out. As I said, our cooks can cook. So go out to the square mm -hmm. from uh, go early, go like 10 o'clock. So you can be first to get it warm and nice. We have in our food fair and we are going to have um, go water, bowl full. We're going to have uh, soup. soup. We're going to have um, mutton. Nice. Tree mutton too, no mutton. <laughs> no, 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 no tree mutton, unfortunately. And we're gonna have this year. We're gonna int reintroduce our sweets bar. We have pastries. We have pastry chefs in early childhood too. People, early childhood people can cook. Make sure you're there early and you early get your taste. Rocks. And don't talk about the drinks. We're gonna have sorrel, ginger beer, local, local, or local, local drinks. Local. Please go out and support. It's for a good cause. Then. We have our um, staff development day, which is on Wednesday the 27th. But on the Tuesday, I'm inviting everyone, especially in the West, to come out and support the children as they showcase their talent at the Sandy Point Hard Court. On the it's 27th, concert. yes, it's our West Zone concert. On the 27th, I go back to our staff development day. All early childhood staff in St. Kitts will be at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. And let me say now, some parents may not know, it's a no school, school day. Please do not take your children to the centers on that day. Somebody we have one caller, the last caller, <laughs> working for you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good How afternoon. are you today? Very well, thank thanks. You. Okay, I would like to commend the panel for the job well done in expressing the things of early childhood. I just want to reiterate, um, I heard something on the street about a boat ride. Can you give me a little bit more information yes. about the boat ride? Okay, the boat ride is held on the 23rd. I was Saturday getting to that. Coming. That's Saturday coming. It's on the 23rd and it's from 6 to 10 p.m. It's on the Prince Devante. Now, the re this initiative, it was one that we did last year and the staff really enjoyed themselves. So even this, they decided to do it again this year. It's the time for the staff to unwind after all of the hard work and socialize. So uh, is it just the staff members? No, 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 no. Anyone can buy a ticket. It's fifty dollars. You can call the Challengers Daycare Center oh, at four six five thirty to sixty five, and uh, I'll source your ticket for you. Okay, but if you you can also call the I'm early child. I work in Bastia. How do I get a ticket in Bastia? From any of the daycare centers or the early childhood unit. But um, check the daycare centers first for your tickets. Okay, thank you very much. And it's fifty dollars for tickets. Okay, thank you very much. Along five the persons. The early childhood unit. Yes. What's the number for the early oh, childhood sorry, unit? Oh, sorry, four six six two eight one zero. Okay. Bring along okay. five or six persons. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks. As we okay. continue with the events.
then our grand parade and we're asking everyone to come out and you know watch the children as they parade this year we are showcasing different aspects of our theme health safety and security so you know it's it's gonna be a very very beautiful sight come on out and see what we have to offer we have some talented teachers in early childhood and parents are coming on board to help to you know create costumes hats floats come out and look at the children as they parade and we advocate and you know sensitize the public about our theme as we showcase our shirts for this year and that's on the 29th the last right. friday in june. june and that is the last thing to cover our month of activities that would bring down the curtain and we begin at 9 a.m at the big tamarind tree right next to the clarence fitzroy Bryan college on the opposite side on kayon street so please come on out and support our remaining events, our boat ride, our food fair, our concert, and our parade day. It sounds pretty good. I think I will give you some support. <laughs> I, hope I, see you. I actually hope to see you in the square on a Friday, and I have your boat ride ticket. Uh, would you like to say anything yes. in closing? I yeah. would just like to inform the teachers, the public schools and private schools that our licensing process has been rescheduled for September, the new school term. So we're encouraging you to continue with your preparations that you had. Be on board when the officers come, about, come around, cooperate with them, make sure that everything is on par for licensing 2018-2019 school term. Okay? And also, too, I would like to encourage those persons out there who are planning to start a early childhood center that you contact us so you can get the correct procedures as to how to go about to get this done yes. because let me inform you that um the out you the reach in the unreach yes. is one of our best practices this is where we go out to the homes the private homes and we help them to stimulate children we show them we give them activities, we spend a day with them or mm -hmm. two days, depends on the period we're helping to set up the environment. Mm -hmm. So we want you to come on board so we can assist you in doing so. This is what this is our job. We enjoy doing it. If you need assistance, call us. We will come to you and we'll assist you. Okay, well thank you so much for appearing on today's and thank you for having us. program. <laughs> thank you. It was really good. My pleasure. Thank so teacher us. Travia. Yes. Teacher Juliana teacher. and teacher Nadine, thank you for appearing today. And I think that you gave valuable information on the importance of early childhood education. I think people now are aware that they, you know they're just dropping off their child, so that you can mind their child. You are molding. Yes. You're molding their children. Okay, so, so thank you again. Day. I want to thank Happy Child Month. <laughs> happy, chi happy Child Month. I want to thank all of our callers and all of our listeners to today's program. We thank you very much for tuning in and we hope that today was of much benefit to you and that you received a lot of information in terms of the importance of early childhood education and development. I am your host Les Roy Williams. Next week we will be back for another edition of Working For You. Until then, have a good time. for you.
a weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your St. Kitts Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of St. Kitts Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you.